Asking a comedian to improvise an entire stand-up set is like asking a magician to do actual magic. House is open. Nobody has any idea what's on their set list, right? No. 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 no that's correct. You get the topics one at a time. Audience sees them same time you do. Ah. <laughs> As long as you're hilarious, nothing can go wrong. Can you believe I'm actually doing this? I want to go up again. I want to go up right now. Oh, God. <laughs> if I don't get a punchline out of this, you'd think it would be easy, wouldn't you? A lot of people say they can do it, but... This is like parachute jumping, where you can't remember if you're actually wearing a parachute. <laughs> it's quite a stunning thing they do. And watch the journey. It's all about the journey, not the destination. I flew here from uh, Denver, Colorado, where I was playing another club and asked for the night off so that I could just come to London for 30 hours to do the show, because that's how much I love doing the show. This is for real. They have no safety nets. They're not going to do their own material. You're seeing people really taking a fucking leap here. Comedy without a net. Let's do it. Have a good one, lovely. Okay, thanks, guys. Is he going to be brilliant? Brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He felt like he was good. He felt confident. It's in the round, guys. I didn't know that it was in the round. <laughs> I would have used a lint roller on the back of my jacket. This guy's brilliant. He just felt, he just felt like he's one of those slick American comics. Obviously, I'm only nice anytime. Not really. <laughs> Will you please welcome the brand new, never before seen set list of TJ Miller? So hopefully it goes well and the jet lag doesn't affect my performance. Thank <laughs> you. Let's begin. You know, so many of any story involving pulling out is sexual. Have you noticed that? You know, very rarely anybody tells you about a story about how they were pulling out of a parking place and they pulled out just at the right time that nobody got hit and there, were, there was no insurance issues. <laughs> Have you noticed that? And I, you know, I, I wish people would tell more of those stories. And I have a, a story that, you know, I was greeting someone. I went in for the handshake, right? Have you ever shaken someone's hand and it just goes on a little <laughs> too long? You're about seven or eight pumps in. And really, you pumped hard in the beginning because you like the person. Then after a while, you've run out of a little bit of steam. So you're just pumping as much as you need to to get the job done. <laughs> and so as I was shaking his hand, you know, I kind of took that moment and I started to pull out. And he tightened up a little bit. Not a lot! <laughs> Not a lot! Because it's hard. It's hard to tighten up. A lot of people say they can do it, but... At this point, we've been shaking 35, 45 seconds. Oh, I count the pumps. Come on, guys, you do too. And then... I tried another time. Slowly kind of pulling out. This time he squeezed a little bit harder. That's when I do something that I want to share with you right now. You take your hand, you go straight into a fish. <laughs> oh man. You know, everybody always speculates, what, what would you do? What would you do if you had a time machine? Most people would go, they'd kill Hitler, they'd sort of try and change the course of humanity for better. But I'm afraid of that moment when I get in my time machine, I press the button, I take myself back to 1940 on the cusp of World War II. And I find Adolf Hitler. I walk up to him, you know, I say, hey, how you doing? I don't know a lot about history. <laughs> and I certainly don't know what the word cusp means. <laughs> is it, it's on the outside of corn, right? I don't know what it is. I know what it is. Your little teeny tiny mustache. <laughs> and I go, I shake his hand. 
hold it for a little too long. I choke and kill him. But I always fear that the manufacturer of the time machine will come back and say, hey, big problem. So the flux capacitor that we thought was sort of working in your unit wasn't. And you never actually went back in time. You just killed a guy with a smaller mustache. <laughs> Sometimes in life, you don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. <laughs> but I'd say about the 15th time that you fall out of a window and you're okay, <laughs> you're either a superhero or you have the only case of this syndrome this has ever happened, and there's a quick way to test whether or not you're a superhero or you just have safe falling out of window syndrome, or as we all call it, SFOT, the rest of it. <laughs> and that is just go to a roof, no windows, jump off the roof. If you survive, you're a superhero. It's your duty to try and protect the rest of humanity, and if you die, then you had safe falling out of the window syndrome. <laughs> and it's a shame you didn't have the other diagnosis. Pretty much okay after going off of a roof <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> Who the fuck put this on here? <laughs> Who did it? Answer now! I come all the way here from America, <laughs> star of Yogi Bear 3D, she's out of my league, How to Train Your Dragon, Get Him to the Greek, Our Idiot Brother, which did not do well overseas. <laughs> I just want to say this is a very, very difficult thing. We can edit this out, right? This was a very difficult thing to get out of here, but you guys were such a wonderful audience. And I feel like a lot of you are like, I want to yell out a set list topic. And I'll do a short joke at just something that someone yells out. Anybody have an idea of a name? There, she was waiting. <laughs> what is it? Menopausal frogs. Menopausal frogs. Okay. Fair enough. Ribbit! <laughs> Thank you, Gennett. There's nothing more fun than an audience that understands that everything you're doing is riff and improvised. And then uh, whenever, that, whenever you find something that is a real comedic moment, it's just, you know, exponentially more rewarding sometimes than something that you've written. You said you were going to do a short joke. You found a one-word joke. <laughs>